Welcome back to Alton Park. Hope you had a good Easter Sunday. It's now the bank holiday and we've got two more races in the GB4 Championship coming up. Uh, an amazing start to this year's second season of the GB4 Championship. A lot colder today, so it's going to be interesting to see how the drivers fare with that. A lot of these drivers are coming in from different championships. They may not have raced with slicks and wings. They're coming from cars. They're coming from carts. So a little bit of an experience there. Could be interesting in these conditions, especially if we get a bit of rain. Now, much like GB3, the GB4 season opener was all about two teammates pushing each other all the way. I won't spoil it for you. Let's watch what happened on Saturday. Highlights from the first race of the GB4 Championship as we will be racing down to the first corner. A KMR Sport front row would see Tom Mill starting from pole position, but it was his teammate, Jeremy Fairburn, that would take the lead down into the first corner around the outside. It would be a switch for the race lead, and it would be Fairburn leading the charge down towards the second and third corner. He was just about able to hang on over the first lap as well, as there was some jostling in the background. A couple of stallers that would have to work their way up the order uh, as well, one of these being Reynolds, the third car in shot here, trying to get past hot gin uh, and also trying to get past cool carney as well he's having a couple of issues uh, locking up into those corners out wide did go colin queen the fourth car in shot as the sun was setting it would cause him some steering issues throughout the rest of the race but it wasn't slowing him down at all he was still attacking cooper webster trying to find his way through there was a bit of lapsed traffic in the form of Thomas Lee, who was just getting in the way of Fairburn and Mills, and then would slow his teammate down on the exit of Nickerbrook as they would rise up Clay Hill. Thankfully, they would all remain fairly close. Tom Mills would go for a sensational move at the first corner. It was a close attempt, but it wouldn't quite work out on that occasion. Meanwhile, behind all that, the battle for the final spot on the podium was heating up. Colin Queen going for a move at the outside of the final corner. He'd be fully alongside and almost making that move up. A super send from Tom Mills, who would try and get down the inside of his teammate Fairburn going down into Cascade. It wouldn't work out on this occasion. It would still be a KMR Sport 1-2, but it would be Fairburn leading across the line from his teammate Tom Mills and Cooper Webster behind. Well, another exciting start to the GB4 season, Piers, and two teammates pushing each other all the way. We kind of predicted that Tom Mills would hold on, but that move from Jeremy Fairburn just gave it to him and he just went off into the distance. I mean, I say into the distance, he was still very much challenged, but you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, it was very, very close in, for the whole top five, actually, but Fairbairn got the better start and uh, Tom Mills pushed him hard all the way, nearly got past a couple of times. I thought there was going to be contact into Cascades with only a few laps to go, but they managed to survive for a great one-two for KMR Sport. So again, uh, prove that they're a front-running team. And it was basically top five for the lead. There was, of course, Colin Queen for the Vortec car as well, and all of them just fighting it out. And it was a great battle to watch for the top five and also further down the field as well. Yeah, and you know, a lot of these drivers coming in to this championship, as I explained a little uh, a few moments ago, they're coming from uh, not cars like this. They're coming from, you know, some have raced Saxos before, some have raced um, carts before. It's hugely different, isn't it? So, I mean, we were maybe expecting more cars to maybe not finish the race. So I think it's actually, you know, shows how well they've been testing and how much effort they've been putting in that we got, you know, pretty much the whole field finishing the race. Especially considering this first round is at Alton Park, which is a tricky circuit. It's narrow, it's technical, there's not much runoff. But it was great to see the racing throughout the field, meaning there wasn't a huge amount of contact. I don't think there was any major incidents, which is great to see. And as you mentioned, a lot of the drivers straight out of carts or other much different cars. And these, these are thoroughbred slicks and wings, single seaters. So good to see them all getting up to speed so quickly. Excellent stuff. Well, we'll remind ourselves where we're racing in just a second. Uh, but first of all, let's hear from the race winner, Jeremy Fairburn with KMR Sport. I mean, what a race there. You made that move, you made it stick and you were challenged throughout. Yeah, he kept me on my feet the whole time, that's for sure. But um, I knew I had to get him on lap one or else he would just break away possibly. But yeah, I'm very glad to have pulled that off. Uh, I mean, that was just really impressive, especially with Tom having the extra year of GB4 experience. And uh, I mean, great for the team as well. Yeah, I couldn't be happier right now on top of the world, to be honest. Um, a lot of people must be watching back home. So a message for them, perhaps? Uh, thank you for all the support, everyone. Um, I miss you guys back at home, but, you know, uh, got my work cut out for me tomorrow for sure, starting P6 in race two. But let's see what we can do. So a great drive from Jeremy Fairburn there to get his first race victory in his very first GB4 race. The conditions here, 10 degrees at the moment, a lot different to what he will have been driving in before over yeah. in the States. So it could be an interesting challenge for him today. When it comes to driving at Alton Park, you've driven around here many, many times. You know, where are those places? Because a lot of the drivers are saying, and Tom Mills certainly saying that once you get ahead here, you know, unless you make a mistake, you pretty much run the race. Where are the places that drivers could possibly overtake? Because I feel like there are more opportunities than Tom is maybe letting on. 
We saw Tom have a fair few goes yesterday and he nearly got through a couple of times, but he is right, Alton Park is one of the hardest circuits to overtake on the calendar, purely due to its nature. It's tight, it's twisty, there's not very wide. Uh, a lot of the big braking zones, are, it, just, it just doesn't lend itself to overtaking. Apart from turn one at the start of the race, I think it's the main opportunity where you can make or lose position. So drivers will be looking to capitalise on that as much as possible. Excellent stuff. Well, we've talked about the track a little bit. Uh, the car is something that we'll need to talk about a little bit later as well. But first, let's see the stats of this track here in Cheshire. It's Alton Park. Let's take a look then at the circuit. We'll be racing Alton Park in Cheshire, starting out the season on Easter weekend. Old Hall Avenue cascades, all fantastic corners as we head down Lakeside towards the island bend into the Shallow Oars hairpin, which has seen its fair share of drama through Britons, over Hilltop and down towards Hislops before we get Nickerbrook, Clay Hill, Water Tower and the fantastic double right-hander of Druids. Under the bridge as we head down towards Lodge Corner and then up and over the rise at Deer Leap. It is an undulating test of a circuit at Alton Park with 17 fantastic challenging turns sending us around the Cheshire countryside. It really is a difficult circuit to nail every single one of the 2.692 miles that is progressed by each of our drivers across the weekend. 22 metres of elevation, most of that done down at Clay Hill. It is a big, big test. We're down here at the Fox Motorsport Garage, a new team to the championship and a new driver as well, Sid Smith. How has it been going so far? Oh, well, to be fair, we haven't been having the best weekends. Um, had a bit of an in incident on uh, Friday practice, unfortunately, led to uh, us having to change a few bits on the car and it unfortunately felt completely different qualifying. So not the best quality either, just getting used to the car. But we got it how it should be and stuff. But uh, yeah, um, well, going into Saturday for the first race, we were thinking uh, we had a good head on us. We were thinking we'd always go, just go forward because we knew we had better pace to be at the front. But um, fortunately, we had an electrical issue where the car just kept switching off and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, it quickly dropped off. And then obviously I tried my best to keep it going and keep it getting restarted, but it hasn't worked out ideal for us so far though. Not an ideal start, however, I'm sure you, it's a long season ahead of us. Uh, how are you thinking or feeling ahead of the, the race, race two and three, of course, with the changeable conditions that might be coming out today? Oh well, yeah, definitely. I think we found the found problem now, so hopefully we shouldn't be having any more problems we had, like we had in the first race. So hopefully we can actually go forward for once and keep our, keep our heads down. But we try not to let it affect us too much because obviously it's only one race, it's a long season to go. So hopefully everyone has a bad race. So, well, not hopefully, but I think everyone will have a a bit of a bad race at some point so hopefully we've got ours, ours out of the way now and we can work on just getting to the front getting some good points each race and then hopefully getting some podiums that's the aim of course podiums always the aim thanks for chatting to us Sid I believe uh, John you've grabbed another driver that's right Piers I'm outside the KMR Sport tent with uh, Jack Clifford who's uh, making his debut here in GB4 this weekend uh, over from Australia from Melbourne a lot of people watching back home it's Tuesday morning uh, so I know they'll be up and excited to watch this race how have you found it so far racing in the UK oh it's been it's been such a such a different experience compared to to racing at home uh, it's been a whole whole new experience of first for me first with wings first with slicks first left foot braking it was always heel and toe at home so lots of skills that I've had to learn and a really steep learning curve that I've had to, had to go up uh, in pre-season testing uh, and that curve is still, still very <laughs> steep. So qualifying was a bit disappointing, um, but move forward in the race uh, to be in the top eight. It's a very competitive grid this year, which is great for GB4 yeah. to have such competitive numbers um, and a really high standard of driving, which is great for the category. So I'm just chipping away at it, giving it my all and the results will come. Indeed they will. Um, what experience have you got then before you came over to the UK to race in GB4? Well I started in karts in Melbourne uh, when I was about 8 years old. I did that until I was 12 uh, and then I did a lot of off-road driving um, in Australia, off-road uh, events uh, when I was 15 and then Formula Ford in a Kent when I was 16 and then the Duratex uh, which we have in uh, Australia at 17 and now Winks and Slicks in the UK at 18. And they say that Melbourne is the city that can have like four seasons in one day. I believe that's what they said when I was over there. And so far today, we've seen sunshine, we've seen rain for that first GB3 race. If it does rain, I mean, you say you've got Formula Ford experience, a lot of the drivers who have done that seem to be pretty good in the rain. Uh, is that a concern or can you take anything under your wing? Oh, no, it's not, it's not a concern. Luckily, uh, last year we actually did have a lot of wet races in the Formula Ford, but wets with wings on the car is a bit different. Um, and in Australia, when it's wet, it's still hot. 
Uh, so some of these British kids in the wet and cold, they're, they're at home and it's something that I've got to get used to. And it's, it's the same with learning any new skill. It's just practice, practice, practice. Um, so I'm, it's great that Tom's racing this weekend. It's given me a lot, a lot to learn from uh, with his experience in the cars, which has really pulled me forward as well. Um, so with this next race, it's still up in the air, whether it'll be wet or dry, it might be half and half. So it's the same for everyone. I'll yeah. give it hell and see what happens. Well, you know what? They said some very nice things about you uh, when we were discussing uh, the race on Saturday. So, I mean, I think it feel like it's your time now in this race. So, Jack, it's great for you to chat to us. Do you want to let us send a message home to people watching in Australia? Yeah. Hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. Hi, Jesse. Lauren. Mate. I know Greg's <laughs> watching. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Uh, the people that I've met in England as well watching. So thanks for the support, guys. Hopefully we get a good result. Excellent. Well, uh, thanks for chatting to me, Jack. And we're going to uh, just re remind ourselves. I mean, you know all about it. I know all about it. But people watching might not know about the GB4 Championship. So let's get a little recap. The GB4 Championship, partnered by the BRDC, is the UK's best value single-seater series and is run by Motorsport Vision's racing arm, MSVR. The 2023 season will see drivers as young as 15 racing a Tata's F4 T014 car at seven events across the country with three races per weekend and 21 in total. Each race weekend consists of one qualifying session and three 18 minute races. The third race features a complete reverse grid with the fastest drivers from qualifying starting towards the back of the pack. The calendar starts at Oldham Park on Easter weekend with visits to Silverstone Grand Prix and Donington Park in May. Then we head to Snetterton in June returning to Silverstone Grand Prix at the end of July, Brands Hatch in September, and we return to Donington Park for the season finale in the middle of October. There are no required pit stops in GB4, but each driver is only allowed to use a maximum of six tyres per race weekend, the equivalent of one and a half sets, so tyre strategy will play a key part in each weekend. There are multiple prizes on offer in GB4, including a £50,000 contribution to a 2024 campaign in GB3 or British Formula 4 will be awarded to the 2023 champion as they look to move on to the next step in their career. There is also the George Russell Pole Position Cup, which awards each driver who claims a pole position with a £125 cash prize, and the driver who takes the most poles throughout the year will also win the Pole Position Cup and a further £1,000. Finally, there is the GB4 shootout for the top teenage National Formula 4 drivers who will take part in a three-way shootout for a £20,000 prize fund towards a seat in next year's GB4 Championship. Hi, my name is Colin Queen. I'm racing for Four Tech Motorsports in the GB4 Championship, and my number is 62. My name is Cooper Webster. I drive for Evans GP, and my car number is 37. Uh, Dylan Hotchin, uh, privateer, DH racing, and number 50. Uh, hi, I'm Harry Reynolds. I'm racing for Elite Motorsport, number 23. So, race number 60, racing for Graham Burn and Racing, and I'm Harry Burgoyne. G'day, I'm Jack Clifford, racing for KMR Sport in the number three GB4 car. Uh, my name is Jason Conzo, I, re I race for Old Field Racing and my number is number four. Jeremy Fairbairn, car number 87, KMR Sport. Joshua Fan, Elite Racing. So I'm Liam McNitty, I'm racing for Fox Motorsport this year and I'm car number 48. Hi, I'm Sid Smith, car 99. Uh, I'm 16 years old and I'm racing with Fox Motorsport for 2023 season in GB4. Tom Mills, KMR Sport, number 21. Well, we're just moments away now from the second GB4 race of the championship year, the first race of the day here on Bank Holiday Monday at Alton Park. But first, let's take a quick look at the car. These 15 drivers will be racing here in Cheshire. The 2023 car then is the same as we were racing in 2022. The Tartus F4 T014, an affordable entry for a lot of these drivers that are moving their way out of karting into slicks and wings. An engine of a 1.4 litre, 160 brake horsepower engine that's sending all of that to the rear wheels, being slowed down by Brembo brakes. Taking a look at the rear of the car, we can see the six speed sequential gearbox, all controlled by panels on the rear of the steering wheel. And as we move around, we can take a look at that rear wing. Uh, 
adjustable over two profiles. They've got a little bit that they can do with that to make the car uh, more uh, oversteery, faster in a straight line as well. Tires, the Pirelli tires that we were running back in 2022, uh, these they get six tires over a race weekend. And the weight of the car being 570 kilos, definitely on the lighter side of things. We'll take a look at the uh, twin wishbone suspension, adjustable for all of the drivers and teams, as well as the adjustable front wing as well. All of these setup changes, all the drivers will be using to maximize their performance across a race weekend. Well, it's raining cats and dogs over here. Yeah. Uh, me and Piers have got the emergency umbrellas up because, yeah, things have taken a little bit of a turn for the worst in the last few minutes or so. Uh, so uh, all of the teams are very hastily putting on the wet tyres. As we saw in the GB3 race earlier, the cars did try and go out with the slicks. Uh, most of the teams then came in, changed to wets, and a few of the leaders didn't, and then eventually everyone started on wet. But as you can see from the tyres uh, on screen right now, I mean, these wet tyres are much more closely uh, resembling what you'd have on a road car, aren't they, Pete? Yeah, yeah, of course. With the slick tyres on a race circuit, when they're completely slick, you've got the most surface area for grip, and they're very, very grippy when they're warm, yeah. but they're not grippy on a, on a wet surface or when they're cold. So that's why we have wet tyres, which, of course, as you can see, are heavily grooved, so they can take the water away and we don't end up with aquaplaning. They'll, however, they do burn off, so if it dries out during this race, then they'll uh, basically melt like chewing gum but I don't think there's any uh, any danger of that going on right now it is very cold very windy and very wet how long does it take for these tires to, to get up to speed I mean it's gonna take a very long time with a wet track no on a wet track actually because they're they've got the blocks the blocks move around and it kind of softens it up so you know half a lap or so actually they'll probably come in quicker on a wet track than a slick tire would on a slip track really because you don't have to sort of heat the whole thing because they're designed to run cold Excellent. Well, we've uh, heard from a few of the drivers beforehand here. We're next, uh, actually next to uh, uh, Jack Clifford's car. And uh, I mean, you can see on the helmet there, just <laughs> constant uh, raindrops uh, getting involved. I mean, when you're sat in the car there, you know, like the GB3 grid, they were sat on the grid for so long there. Are you getting quite wet as a driver? I mean, is that something that's unwelcome or is it <laughs> not really your main concern at that you point? Will, it, it is quite unpleasant actually getting wet in the car and it would be quite useful you see some of the drivers have got umbrellas going on like for example the old field motorsport car there uh, of Conzo that is very useful because the rain when you get in your wetsuit especially as soon as you go out on the track the wind then goes round and you get freezing quite yeah, quickly and also it goes on the back of your neck as well which is very uncomfortable yeah you don't want that and actually in the off season me and Piers did a little bit of karting with Nicholas Taylor and Max Maserati who were in the GB4 championship last year and I tried to drive I mean I'm not a driver by any means Piers is obviously <laughs> a professional driver trying to drive in the wet you know with the spray it is is one thing but if you've not got the right helmet and and there's huge differences in helmets i just had the helmet that you would hire whereas you had your professional racing helmet you could see everything and i couldn't see a thing yes. so i mean there's going to be differing helmets that the drivers have here with different visors and i know you're you're the fan of a light smoke visor which we were talking <laughs> about a little bit a little while ago but honestly I, I i don't see sometimes how you can actually see with all that spray well the spray is one thing of course when it go i mean you saw the shots in the gb3 race you'll see it later on in the gb4 race shortly but as soon as the cars go around, the spray goes in the air, especially over this, the back end of the circuit with the trees, the spray just doesn't get blown away. So it is quite hard to see. But you mentioned about the visors as well. A lot of the drivers uh, have tinted visors on, but in the wet, you want a clear visor because you, I mean, think about going out in the clouds with the sunglasses on, it's, it's not clear to see. Yeah. And you can get double layer visors as well, and they stop the steaming up quite as much. So this driver here that we're looking at, Jack Clifford, he's only got a single layer clear visor, so they can yeah, steam up that. a little bit more than the double layer ones. But the double layer ones, unfortunately, are a bit more expensive, but yeah, well yeah. worth it, I reckon. And as you can see there, the jacket is being used as a temporary windshield. Let's hope that's a wind and rainproof jacket. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm sure KMR Sport invest in the best jacket. <laughs> they possibly can. Uh, we've got to talk a little bit about Tom Mills here. Now, yep. I know we focused on him a little bit uh, in the last race, but he is particularly good in the wet because of all of his racing with Formula Ford. Yeah, Formula Ford is a uh, no no wings, no downforce. It pretty much feels like driving in the wet most of the time, but he's also done a lot of miles in that car and he knows the Alton Park in the wet really well as well. And we were chatting to him before the race and he was saying, you know what, I don't mind if it rains. I think I'm pretty confident. Well, he so, cheered when it started raining. Yeah, he did. He was like, yeah, I'll take, bring it on. So he's clearly confident, knows this car and feels like he's got good pace in the wet. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how the drivers around him, of course, the rest of the grid, all new to the championship and to this yeah. car. So how they got on with it, uh, will, how they get on with this car in the rain will dictate how well they do in the race. I mentioned earlier on actually about the tyres taking uh, not that long to come in. I actually misremembered. They will take a lap or two to get to full full grip because okay. uh, when they are completely new like this, these tyres we've got on, uh, I've got on the car. KMR Sport car of Clifford, that, that, that sort of 
that lacquer on the outside of the tyre takes a while to yeah. wear off. OK, well, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. We can see over here, actually, the red and white car of Harry Burgoyne um, is coming having some, uh, you know, have some have playing around in the back of it there, which we won't get too close to because teams are obviously very protective over their settings back there with, uh, with everything that is housed under that cover. But that's not ideal with the rain coming down either. You don't want to get a bit of water in there. No, I can tell you I'm almost certainly what's happening there is they're making a rear roll bar change. So with the suspension of these cars, you have two things. You have uh, the suspension which holds each wheel up, and then you have a roll bar which stops the car sort of wallowing. Like if you're on a bus, you'll feel it wallow from one side to the other. They have what is called an anti-roll bar, which basically keeps the car flat, and you want the car flat for stability and for the aerodynamics. But what they'll be doing is just so probably just softening that off a little bit, because it makes the rear of the car a bit more compliant. You can hit the curbs a bit harder. It makes it a bit more predictable to drive. Sometimes gives you a bit more grip. So some of the teams will be doing that, some of them will have done it already, some of them will be just making tweaks now. But it's purely preference, I mean ultimately it doesn't make a huge difference to the lap time. Ideally you'd like a little bit more rear stability, so that'll be, uh, Harry Burgoyne Jr. will be uh, pretty happy with that, uh, I think, going out on the circuit, because it is getting wetter by the minute, yeah. my feet are quite, quite, quite damp now. Yeah, it really is. There's a man there, just uh, Ollie Dutton, just to our left, who uh, it looks like he should have brought a coat, of course, the uh, <laughs> the man in charge at Fortec. Um, Harry Reynolds uh, for Elite Motorsport yeah. was uh, struggling in that last race. He's the number 17 car, just to my right over here with an umbrella. Um, great helmet, actually, uh, on, Harry's, uh, on Harry's head there. Obviously, he had a little bit of trouble there. A lot of uh, problems getting the car started, and that would have probably affected him in his first GB4 race. Yeah. You know, it's probably not ideal for him to come out now wanting to you know, make up for that and having these conditions. And, and, you know, we mentioned before, some of these drivers are not as experienced as Tom Mills will be. He's got that full season of GB4 under his belt already. So, you know, there's going to be pressure as a driver because yeah. you want to make up for it. You don't want to then, you know, put too much pressure on yourself and make a mistake. Yeah, of course. I mean, the, with the wet weather, it throws in so many more variables. With the, the lines in the dry, there's pretty much one fastest line in the wet you can go inside you can go outside there's slippery bits some of these circuits some of, sorry some of these drivers might know, not know where the slippery bits are on the circuit maybe they, if it keeps raining like it is now there might be some rivers running across the track and the more experienced drivers will know where they are and be able to predict that on the first couple of laps so by the end of this sort of 18 minute race most of the drivers will be up to speed but it's just the start of the race where you know you can gain a lot of positions those drivers with a bit more experience in potentially these cars or at this circuit in the wet will have yeah. a bit of an advantage like for example tom mills who i know as we mentioned a moment yes. ago is looking forward to the wet well in fact in the gb3 race the, the start that james headley got you know over joseph yeah. Loke, and joseph Loke's very experienced with these kinds of cars but not with the gb3 car james headley was really really quick off the line there so um, you know that was very impressive from him yeah uh, just looking around at some of the other drivers i mean they all seem fairly chilled considering you know it's raining and it's only their second gb4 race i would be a little bit more worried <laughs> How, at what stage would you would you be looking at the race not taking place i mean when does it get dangerous when when there's enough standing water and i think the standing water is the issue when there's you know the circuit's wet the spray can be an issue but i don't think in these cars with the you know there's not a huge amount of downforce in the gb4 cars so it, you're not going to see spray like we do quite in formula one however if the rain keeps falling and then you end up with puddles on the circuit yeah. lots of rivers and the and then the drivers start aquaplaning and it's at that point you can't control the car no matter what you do it's not down to skill at that point is when the race director will consider potentially looking at some other options for either safety car or red flag but i think it's unlikely that's going to happen unless we have a a real deluge uh, in the next few moments. Yeah, I mean, it does look like it's going to stay uh, a little bit similar to this. We did see this cloud coming a little bit earlier, and uh, I think your driver's instinct kicked in. You looked <laughs> up and went, that looks angry. Yeah, I and did. It's, uh, it's kind of angry, and it's, it's the wind is actually something. As you can see with the umbrellas here, we're having to fight to hold on to these. So that is something else the drivers are going to have to contend with. Is this a track that's largely affected by the wind? We find a lot of the tracks that are on former airfields yes. struggle the most because obviously they're in places where yeah. there's high winds. Well, Snetterton, for example, is notoriously windy. Silverstone as well. They're very flat circuits. Here we've got the, uh, the luxury of some tree cover which holds the spray, but at the same time, yes, it covers some parts, so then you might not feel the effect of the wind, but then you'll come out of turn one and then out into that big open area going down to Cascade and suddenly it can affect how the car feels. These GB4 cars, maybe not quite as much because there's not such as the wings aren't quite as big as in GB3, but you'll definitely notice how it affects the car in terms of the balance. So if you've got, for example, the wind coming from behind you, it'll generally push you on into the corner. You'll need to brake earlier because you're going faster, but also you'll have less rear grip going into the corner. Whereas the opposite happens, if you've got the wind on the nose, so at, at you as you come into the corner, you'll turn in with loads of grip, and then on the exit, you might find that if that wind dies down, then you'll have a bit of a moment 
And it's, you know, it's all about thinking about what happened last lap. Sometimes it's unpredictable. We've even seen in Formula One at Barcelona last year, Sainz, I believe, and Verstappen both got caught out by a gust of wind. It's not too windy today, so I think we should be okay, but it's definitely a consideration. And the, the, the good teams will be telling the drivers what the wind is doing in terms of direction compared to where they drove before. Fair, fair enough. I actually think, yeah, it's actually stopped raining now. We could even lose the umbrellas. I might just keep it just in case. Uh, but, it, I mean, when the rain stops like this, I guess you don't react too quickly because there's still loads of standing water on the track there until the cars go around and maybe uh, dislodge it. Yeah, of course, it's, it's going to stay wet for a while. It's not warm today. The sun is not out, so it's not going to dry particularly quickly. We've got a grid of about, what, 15? I think it's 15 GB4 cars, so they won't be, won't be particularly dry in the circuit that quickly, whereas we saw just the race before this, we had a, uh, the GT Cup cars, and they were... Uh, sorry, GT Cup, the British GT cars. They yeah. were actually drying the circuit quite quickly. Of course, they're much heavier. There's a lot more of them. So, you know, I don't. it might dry out a little bit on the racing line, but I think this is going to be a wet race through and through. But as I mentioned earlier in the GB3 race, tyre pressures is critical. Some teams will be going, right, higher pressures, so the tyres will heat up quickly, but then they might go off by the end of the race, and we better get out of the way. Yeah, we are going to get out of the way. I can say that the GB4 inaugural champion from last year, Nicholas Taylor, is walking around while we're here in about 15 layers with umbrellas. He's walking around in shorts. So it just shows you, you know, if you're that kind of guy who can win a GB4 championship, you don't care about the weather. Yeah, sure. Um, the cars are just starting to go out now, as you'll see behind us. I think we can probably drop these. No, it has started raining again. This is the thing, we just can't tell. It's gonna be showers on and off. We now look like we're in some kind of singing in the rain remake. But as the cars go out, I think it's probably, yes, I'm being told Mary Poppins in my ear. You're Dick Van Dyke. That's <laughs> Thank right you. with you. I think we'll, uh, we'll get ready to go racing here at Alton Park. And so the craziness continues then. After a fantastic race a couple of days ago, the conditions have changed. It is going to be a wet race here for round number two of the GB4 Championship, partnered by the BRDC. And if honestly, if Saturday's race is anything to go for, we are, we are in for an absolute barnstorm it was an incredible race that battle between fairburn between uh, mills right at the front you also you had cooper webster uh, being in there as well colin queen just about keeping them for for company a fan as well just about the top five were separated by absolutely nothing throughout the race it was breathtaking stuff I get the feeling that we are in for uh, for a very similar treat in this one, maybe even slightly more so. As uh, Piers and John, as we're both saying down uh, in the assembly area, it is quite cold. Only about uh, 11 and a half degrees ambient temperature. It is not going to dry the track particularly quickly. As much as it's not as wet as it was in the GB3 race that we had earlier on today, it's still quite wet out there it's certainly you couldn't go out there uh, go out there on the, on the slick tires i'll discuss a little bit about where we are and and, and what we're doing and uh, kind of some of the things that have happened between qualifying we're not we're not going to see the grid just yet we'll see them when they start the uh, the formation lap uh, and such but jeremy fairburn of course race winner will start this race from sixth place and i kind of wonder if maybe it is is the rain a little bit of a blessing in disguise because getting through the grid yesterday, we did see that yesterday it was quite hard to pass. And there were those struggles, there were those issues. And yet, in a wet race, you've got more opportunities, you've got more attempts, more positions, more potential to make a move. And I wonder if Fairburn will use that to, to kind of come up the order from sixth place. Because he's not going to be the only one making his way uh, way up the order. You know, you've got uh, a couple of others that will be further down. Uh, Irfan, uh, Harry Wenels as well. They'll all be looking for that opportunity, taking advantage of what will be a wet and crazy uh, race, I have no doubt. 
We'll take a look at the grid now uh, so we can see exactly what's going on. Tom Mills will be starting the race from pole position. Cooper Webster in second uh, for the Evans Grand Prix team. Of course, he had a podium yesterday and will start this race from the second position. What can he do from there? Liam McNeely and Colin Queen on row two. Colin Queen has some great pace, particularly towards the end of yesterday's race. And Liam McNeely had a couple of issues, so he'll be looking to bounce back from that. Josh Irfan was in that, uh, that battle for the race lead. And then Jeremy Furban, your race winner in the previous race, uh, as we'll see. Harry Burgoyne Jr., then Harry Reynolds, uh, who had some very early dramas. I think he even stalled on the, uh, on the start finish. Ruan Alva, and then Sid Smith in ninth and 10th. Jason Conzo, and then Aditya Kalkani in 12th position. You had a couple of lockups coming down towards his lops. And then Jack Clifford, Dylan Hodgson in the... Uh, best livery on the grid just going to say it right now down in 14th position and Thomas Lee in the final spot Lewis McLeaden Piers Pryor in the commentary booth as always Piers it's tricky out there it's going to be treacherous Lewis it's definitely definitely where all the tie all the drivers on wet tires they'll be trying to get their feeling for the grip out there you can see them moving around trying the inside of the circuit trying the outside picking the best line on the first lap is going to be very important Tom Mills in pole position is my pick for the win here. He seemed very confident sure. ahead of the race. He knows these cars, he knows them in the wet. He likes the wet and uh, he was actually, I was chatting to him before the race and he said, uh, I said, oh, if it rains, what are you thinking? He's like, well, I prefer the rain, mate. I think I'm faster uh, in comparison to the dry in the rain around here. So very confident. I am going to lean a slightly different way then. Just Please do, Lewis. I'm going to lean towards Cooper Webster. I've, okay. I've, I've got I've got a bit of faith in uh, in Webster. I mean, he's uh, he's used to driving on iRacing. That basically drives out the wet. So you know, he's uh, he's in a good spot. <laughs> so, <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no uh, there's no wet weather on iRacing. Sim racing joke, by the way. There's, Sorry, everyone. <laughs> there's no wet weather on iRacing as of yet. You can see they're using a lot of curve in the middle of Britain chicane. They've actually removed a tire wall that used to be there, which has improved vision through that corner, yeah. which is good. But you can see how hard they're working. Tom Mills going left and right. And then in the background, you can also see, I think that is Cooper. No, that's uh, Colin Cui. No, Lee McNeely, actually, I'm wrong. Lee McNeely in third place, really using all of the road there. Any temperature they can get in these tires in these cold and wet conditions will be handy. And Lewis, look on the outside of the circuit there. You can see all of the marbles, the stones. In the dry, very slippery. In the wet, actually, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. So uh, you can be a bit more creative with your lines. Yeah, I did see Harry Bergoyne Jr. was going out quite wide there. There's Dylan Hodgins. Thomas Lee, I don't believe, is taking to the uh, to the start. Uh, but yeah, they were running quite wide through there. We saw that in GB3, though, as well. They were using basically all of the road. They kind of had a little bit here at Druids. It's not kind of one you want to run all the way around the outside. Otherwise, no. you were end up on the same. We saw that a couple of times. Yeah, Druids is uh, this corner right here, a very fast double apex right hand. And only a lift and maybe a small break in the drive in the wet it is definitely a break and potentially down a couple of gears as we now head towards the last corner druid uh, not druid uh, the last corner which will be of course lodge. lodge corner which will be the main overtaking opportunity during the race in my estimation actually more so in the in the dry than the wet but still we saw in the gb3 race oh oh cooper webster has come into the pit lane surely not for slick tires Surely not for slick tyres. Well, this is so they're getting a couple of formation laps, which is uh, you know, normal, fair enough, uh, and, and and what have you, uh, and that uh, okay, fair enough. That is interesting. But I wonder what? maybe he's got an issue that we're unaware of. This can't be for slick tyres, surely. That no, would be a not. very very bold. No, it looks like an issue. Just to clarify, by the way, that is not the commentator's curse. I just to clarify. We'll see. Anyway, the commentator's curse. The good thing doesn't exist. The good thing you can see Tom Mills right around the outside of Cascades there, finding the grip there as he's trying out to see how how fast and how wide he can go. But yeah, it looks like there's an issue with Cooper Webster there, which is really unfortunate. And that Evans GP car, I got caught out. I thought it was one of the KMR Sport cars, yeah. but of course, very similar liveries on the uh, KMR Sport and uh, Evans GP cars. But Liam McNeely now, isn't that, he's McNeely in second place, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but he won't be starting from the front row. No, he won't. But he'll be second what, in line. What will happen is, uh, yeah, for anyone who's who's not watched, you know, too much before, well, yeah, how, you don't know how it works. Basically, what's going to happen is there will be a, an empty spot on the grid. Everyone will return to the where, where they've been told to go from the marshals on that that reconnaissance lap, where they first essentially started the formation lap. That's where they'll be starting this race, regardless. Even if 
you were in 13th position and everyone came into the pit lane, you're still starting from yep. the 13th grid so spot. You're, you're just going to roll up to pole. Even better for Tom Mills. He's going to be standing alone, proud in the front, front row of the grid, with a bit more space to work with. That'll allow him potentially a bit more space to work with on the outside, maybe giving him uh, an opportunity to open up turn one a bit more without being in, under so much pressure. But yeah, you can see again, look at all this 15 car grid. Great to see so many GB4s out again at the first run Big of the time. season, Lewis, isn't it? You know, I think this is uh, more than we had at any point last year. So, uh, or is it equal? I think, no, I think we had, we had, we might have had six, not seven, if I remember correctly. It's a very strong, final round. it's a very strong start. We can see the number 16 there going sideways. Josh Irfan completely sideways with the middle of the Knickerbrook chicane, uh, testing the limits of grip. Let's hope he doesn't uh, test it a little bit too far and, uh, and have a little issue. It is very easy we saw in GB3 race once yeah. again. Yeah, it uh, certainly today. is. And the rain does seem to be coming down even a little bit heavier over the uh, the back of the circuit as they rise up to the uh, the top of Clay Hill. Again, still they've been working for two laps to get as much heat into their tyres. How close to the optimal will they be on tyres right now? When you say optimal, what do you mean? Is it like optimal tyre well, temperature? Tyre temperature, yeah. yeah. We'll be oh, probably 60% of the way there. Okay. I mentioned on the grid, actually, I, I, I misremembered. I thought these tyres switched on pretty quickly. These Pirelli's wet tyres are actually pretty pretty durable in the uh, in the wet when it's full wet like this, and they will take a while to come into full operating window. And it does make a huge difference where you set your tyre pressures. I remember specifically when I did a race, I think it was Snetterton a couple of years ago, on the same tyres they use in this the GB4 and GB3 championship. We went way too high on our tyre pressures, and I thought I was out in centre on lap three. I'd go off about five or six places. I was flying. Lo and behold, three or four laps later, I was about three seconds off the Re pace. Reality hit. Yeah, reality yeah, hit. I am not out in centre, unfortunately. Oh, weird, weird, weird. I mean, I'd, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to record here. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> focusing, focusing on the race at hand, of course, the empty grid spot over on what will be the right-hand side, the furthest shot, the left-hand side of the actual grid as they look at it. Tom Mills will start this one from pole position. I don't know if maybe Cooper Webster will be starting from the pit lane. We'll have to wait and see. As we get ourselves ready to go for the second race of the GB4 Championship, partnered by the BRDC, it's Tom Mills starting from pole position and a clear start to the grid. That's Harry Burgoyne Jr. having a poor start for the Graham Brunton racing team in the background. He's going to get away slowly, but he's going to lose all of the positions. Tom Mills with a very solid lead going on the attack through the first corner. Uh, that will be Josh Irfan, who's sent one down the inside of this elite motorsports car. Not quite making the move stick there. He's uh, backed out, which is probably the right thing to do. Now under pressure from his teammate in the other white, uh, no, yellow and black elite motorsport car. So that's uh, a very close start. As we see another one of the KMR Spork drivers, I think, at the back getting side by side. I couldn't see exactly who that was in the spray, but McNeely with a solid start in second place. But Mills, this is exactly what he wanted. Yeah, Fairburn, who we're looking at here. Fairburn's going to go down a position, though, because the old field motorsport car, that's an absolutely sensational move around the outside. Is that Conzo? That is. Uh, was that what? No. It, it is Conzo. It, it, and it is Fairburn. So Conzo must have made up so many spots. He, was, he started this race in 11. Yeah, and he almost went around the outside of two corners at Island, at Island Bend, which is a crazy move to do. He's still side by side. He's going all Piers Pryor in that race at Snetterton. He's working his way up a bit too much curb there, though, as he's trying to get past Sid Smith. And he does manage to finally get that one done. Surely those pressures are quite high, because those tyres look like they're working phenomenally at this point. Uh, hey, he might just be finding some grip. And now, unfortunately, that means that uh, Sid Smith has been passed also by oh, the... Hodgins gone wide, Dylan Hodgins gone wide, he's going to have to go through the chicane. Yeah, it's not good to go through, well I say it is good to go through there, you'd rather that than go across the grass, but yeah, you good. always lose time going through that chicane. He'll join in, uh, hopefully rejoin the race as it we was before, obviously if you gain an advantage yeah. doing that you'll uh, have to give that up, otherwise you'll be uh, receiving a penalty from the stewards, but everything's uh, sort of settled down a little bit now, everyone's finding their own relative positions, we see Hodgins still on the back there of the other, uh, Clifford, yeah. yeah, of, of uh, Jack Clifford. Oh no, oh. big move, that is... That's is that Colin Queen? Queen? Yes, it, it is. is Colin Queen. Oh, it's a big shot. He's got, obviously gone in way too hot at, uh, at Druid's corner. Rear gone in backwards. First, yeah. yeah. Oh, so easily done there. He's clearly taken a bit too much speed in. Rear end. And that's... Oh, oh Connor, Conzo, Sorry, Conzo has gone wide at the last corner after such a good start. Yeah. Wow, drama on the first lap. We thought I was literally just saying that was commentator's curse. Lewis, I said everything settled down, and then instantly no, there's two no people. There's no such thing as the commentator's curse. Everyone was dropping as it. Li Liam McNeely is looking very fast now at the front end of the field. He's got on right in the back of uh, of Tom Mills. Yeah, we're going to keep an eye on the uh, on the sector times here because we we'll definitely need to see what McNeely's going to be doing over that first sector because he is keeping him real company uh, with about faster by about a tenth and a half of a second. The pair of them though, uh, Mills and McNeely, were like 
three, four, five tenths faster than Earth and behind. They are flying at they, the moment. They are both flying. I know Liam, Liam McNeely, I think he's got some experience in uh, another series, of course. So he's, uh, he potentially knows Alton Park in the dry, in the safety wet. Safety car's out. Oh, the safety car? Oh, yeah, safety car is out. That is not a shock with, uh, no. with where Queen's car is in conditions like this. Safety first and all that. Uh, and his car is in the uh, it's in the danger zone. Yes, it is very much so. through a really difficult corner. And it, it's blind as it's well. It's fast, it's blind, it's easy to make a mistake. Slightly off camber, kind of on the way in. Yeah, that's a, it's a good call by the uh, the stewards and the, and the clerk of the course there. I think that's a good thing to do because, or the race director, should I say, because you don't want anyone going through there and hitting that car because, you, you know, the barriers are designed to be hit. They're designed to absorb energy. You hit another car, not only is it expensive, but also, of course, it increases the danger. And the marsh is doing a great job. There is our electric safety car for this year. Mm, I know, fantastic. Yes, it's uh, fully electric, so that will be... Whiz, 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 whiz. It'll be it's fully it's collecting. It'll be collecting mills at the front of the field, and the field will get backed up. You can see it uh, just on the top so of Cascades there. I was going to kind of wonder about this. So obviously, Colin Queen, his driver coach for the season, as there is Keeper Webster, who's still not got back going again. So uh, obviously, all the issues where going yeah. on there. Uh, unfortunately, he's basically thrown him out of the race. Uh, Colin Queen, his driver coach, is uh, is is 2022 GB4 champion. Uh, Nicholas Taylor, I know. Yep. Well, I was having a great chat with him about this whilst playing golf yesterday. Uh, you didn't join us, that's fine. That's fine, it's okay. Uh, He's watching my hair. What? <laughs> what? Considering that, that Nicholas Taylor's not had much wet weather experience himself, yep. obviously he had that brand hat from where he crashed. Maybe that's how he passed on the information. Uh, but what advice can he give? Well, it's all you about, I mean? it's, realistically, it's about the lines, how to how to drive the car in the wet. As you said, Nicholas Taylor potentially might not have driven a, not, right. uh, a GB4 car in the wet Alton Park. I I don't think it was wet last year, last year unless he did a test. No, day, right? no, it wasn't. But, but it, well, they, it was really wet on the media day, though. Yes, so. but, however, it will be more about, of course, how to drive the car. So you you can watch from an onboard video. As a driver that's experienced with the cars, you can see where the car is on the limit, and you can see where there is more time to find if you're using all the road, if you're on the right parts of the circuit. Are you, are you actually at the limit of the tyre? Because to start with, you need to... There's sort of almost two or three things to getting a good lap time and good speed in the wet. Is one, you have to make sure you're on the limit of the tyre for most of the corner because it's very easy to under or over drive a wet tyre. You can either slide through the corner and be way off the pace or you can just think, oh, I'm near the edge of grip and you're actually not. And then there's also being on the right part of the circuit where the grip is, so sometimes it's the outside. Uh, and sometimes it's all about just making sure that the line is short because you're going slower anyway. So you'll notice through the Britain's chicane, through the uh, Nick and Brooks chicane as well, they'll often just jump straight over the curbs and kind of straight line it because you can't turn as well as you can in the dry. So yeah, why yeah, turn yeah. when you could go in a straight line and use the curb to hook you around? Yeah, I kind of remember seeing it from, uh, I mean, if you keep your eyes open, especially on like the restart stuff, I remember yesterday, or sorry, um, yeah, it was, it was Rougeon. Uh, who went yeah. into turn one yes. and, and the car just didn't turn yeah. Yeah, into Old Hall. Uh, and, it, uh, it, and so as it's done, it's just like pushed out wide, yeah. pushed out wide. Oh, it's got let's really have a look. So we've got a replay of uh, Colin Queen. Yeah, he's just gone in way, way too, too hot. Fast. He's got on the grass in the middle of the corner, which is easy to do because it's a double apex corner. So the outside of the circuit kind of comes up on you quite quickly. And if you miss the first apex and carry too much yeah. speed, which is so easily done because they're still, they're still on the lap one guessing their braking points because they haven't done a full racing lap around here in the wet today, at least. Yeah. So he will have guessed it either braked a bit too late or braked, locked up a wheel or potentially um, not trusted the amount of braking he can use and just rolled a bit too much speed and touched the grass. And as we all know, wet grass plus uh, racing tyres, it's not equal grip. No, it's why I couldn't believe that uh, Costa de Paris didn't spin going into uh, into his laps, into the Nickerbrook chicane, yeah. because he touched the grass in the braking zone. You've still even got the mud where he went. Yeah. And, but he didn't spin. Uh, so yeah, that's amazing. The rain's getting heavier, by the way. You can kind of see it on the screen right now, at least uh, not where we are in the commentary booth. Uh, as literally everyone in here is like looking around and be like, is it, what are you talking about, Liz? Uh, but you can kind of see that down here, the rain certainly looks heavier on our uh, on our camera. I know it can be a bit deceptive, but I do believe the rain's got heavier over the back end of the circuit. Yes, you can see it's certainly still very wet. There's not really a drying line at all yet. You can, uh, of course, see the shiny uh, parts of the circuit where there's more water. There's a few puddles <laughs> offline but not too bad online so we we're not going to be in a position where we're going to have to red flag for conditions unless the rain really oh, starts yeah, throwing yeah. it down which is good to see because we want to see some racing out the lewis yeah hopefully we'll get about eight more minutes of racing we've still got 10 minutes 40 to go that'll take another lap or so for them to retrieve the rest of this car uh, the marshals once again again doing an excellent job of uh, making sure that we can get racing and also ensuring everyone is safe our orange army a, a team of volunteers there they are 
we could not go racing without them. No. Thank you so much to all of the marshals and volunteers across the country, but also especially here at Auckland Park this weekend. Yeah, and especially uh, to, to be out there in conditions like this. You know, it's like they, they have a long day. As we talk about, you know, everyone that works in the motorsport weekend, whether, you know, all, all the camera operators and everything like that, and then we get the cushy somewhat. You, you have to go out there and be in, out in the wet a little bit. I get the cushy job of just sitting there. You can sit in the cons box, stay nice and dry, but the marshals love it, and that's why they do it. There's a real community amongst the marshals. They love it. They come back every year. They get training over the winter. And, and they so good. And they're so good. Well, they're the best in the world. That's why, you know, when there's often new Grand Prix, Formula One Grand Prix around the world, they'll ship in British marshals because the world knows that we have the best marshals and it's uh, thanks to them that we are able to go racing as drivers and feel safe and as safe as we can because of course we know motorsport is dangerous and there's nothing we can do to stop it being dangerous but we can reduce the risk as much as possible and if something does go wrong we've got the best team possible there to, to help us out. Are the marshals called in Spain? I don't know. No, we, we, El Marshall. No, it was it was in it was in the little group chat we've got. I think they're called like. Oh, nearly an accident in the back of the field there, Lewis. As you were chatting about oh. Spanish marshals, there was uh, someone nearly ran into the back. We almost had a repeat of the GB3 incident at the last corner That's there. But funny. good, um, good visualize or sort of awareness from the driver. The back didn't quite catch the number. It's quite hard to see the numbers from a distance of the spray. Uh, that is Colin Queen's car, almost fully retrieved now. Uh, is they, they were called commissioners, by the way. Wow, that sounds official. That I was like. Can, can we call some of our marshals commissioners? That sounds epic. That does. Uh, but yes, I, I don't know. I think it might have been uh, potentially Alva. Uh, yes, I think it was. It was one of the white vortex. That would have been Alva. Oh, no, it would have been Kulkani, actually. Sorry. Yes, uh, Kulkani oh, nearly Kulkani ran into the back Alva, of, yeah. uh, of Konzo. Oh, Konzo, you've got to feel for Konzo. He was such, such look at star. the rain now at the back end of the circuit, Lewis. Wow, that is coming down. Oh, yeah, it's going to be coming through the commentary booth. <laughs> yeah, no, this is why I moved all your paper over to the other side of the commentary booth, mate. We're getting soaked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look at the rain now. That spray is getting worse. So, again, something else to uh, to consider for the drivers. The, the conditions will be changing lap on lap. And that's something you do not get in the dry, really. Yes, the rubber goes down, but it sort of, the track evolves slowly. Whereas now, look at the water on the circuit. Ooh. That changes things, Lewis. So those drivers are potentially would have gone a bit, you know, softer on the tyre pressure, potentially thinking it might dry out. They, uh, I say the drivers, it's the teams more than the drivers that will be making those calls, unless you're a more experienced driver, potentially like Tom Mills. But the lower you go in the pressures, the longer they take to come in, but the better they will be at the end of the race, potentially if it doesn't get too wet. But now with this, you basically want to be pumping those tyres right up to get as much grip as possible, open the tread out. It looks like the lights may have gone out on the stage car, so we could be good to go. Emini second. I, I, Emini. Oh, no. Emini second. Uh, it's Dylan Hotchin, who's gone for a spin at the top of Clay Hill. Is he going to be able to get back going again? Yes, he is. We are going to get soaked. We are <laughs> I'm getting soaked here in the comments box. <laughs> I'm right. glad you picked that side of the commentary box. Right, race is about to get back underway then. Safety car is coming. I'll do this whilst Piers is trying to sort out everything of what's going on. Uh, as we'll see, Tom Mills take control uh, of the race. And will he be able to secure this one? As he'll lead our way back under green flag racing, McNeely behind. And let's see what happens down towards turn one. I did see the safety car. No, it's green flag. It's okay, green flag. Okay, okay. So, so the, the elite motorsport cars of Irfan and I didn't catch the other number. Oh, yes, the elite motorsport cars having a fun. Oh, oh contact, no. Sid Smith. Into the barrier, safety cars breed safety. Oh, he might actually be able to carry on. That was with Fairburn, I think, yes, championship leader, of course. The race, race winner yesterday, and Sid Smith has become stationary. Unfortunately, that grass is going to be really, really wet, so maybe he won't be able to get going. Although, yeah, on the wet tyres, should have enough. He should be able to get going. Hopefully, the marshals will be able to fix that barrier um, ready for the drivers to come around next lap because they've all been bunched up under safety car. Because we'd like to see this go green for the remaining six minutes and 18 seconds. But it is so wet out there now. It is going to be a basically a race of survival out here. Yeah. Tom Mills, yes, he's confident in the wet, but you can see even the elite motorsport car there sliding sideways. Wowzers! This is uh, this is getting this is getting intense out there, Lewis. It's going to be a tough, tough race uh, as they head their way through uh, the Britain's chicane and down towards his lops. As we'll see, Tom Mills, he's looking comfortable at the moment, but it's... The, the as comfortable is, as you can be. I was going to say, you, the, the kind of the balance that you have to, to, to strike between comfort and then um, 
and then kind of like stressing about the race is, is unreal. Let's see here. Fairburn then without a front wing, obviously after the Sid Smith injury. He's got yep. uh, uh, Burgoyne Jr. behind him. And let's see who else is coming That's through. The safety car has come out. The safety car has returned to the circuit. Second time this race. So the safety car. Who's that car going slowly? Is that Burgoyne Jr.? Has he got an issue? No, that's one of the Fortec cars. That must be Alva. Must yeah, Alva must have had an issue. I didn't, see, I didn't see him go off. He was just going slowly up Clay Hill. So either the car, I don't know what's going on there. We'll have to see if we can get some sort of replays. A front, front wing, Jess yeah, that'll there. Yeah, uh, that'll obviously be uh, Fairbairns. Oh, Sid Smith can't continue the race. That's a real shame. That's probably why the safety car's come out. He's tried to get back on the road. You can see he's in a different position than he was when he came out of the barrier, but the grass just being too wet, he, he can't get enough traction to get out of the... Uh, yeah, it's going to be out soaked the... out there. Look, you can see it now. I mean, there's been quite a lot of rain here in, in England the last couple of weeks, and it's been a waterlogged, and yeah, safety car, four minutes remaining. We might get a couple of racing laps towards the end. Potentially. Potentially. It'd be good to see that, because uh, the racing that we've have had, the small amount of racing has been good, um, apart from a couple of incidents we've had, but uh, yeah. Drivers in the right thing, just slowing down behind the safety car, making sure the marshals can do their job. They are going to push that car uh, onto the circuit. He probably won't be able to continue due to having, of course, had it, uh, outside Marcus assistance. Yeah, exactly. So uh, he'll be plundering his, so plodding his way back to the pit lane to get to collected by his team. Sid Smith, we spoke to him before the race. He was uh, looking forward to the race today, unfortunately not having the best race there. And there's almost another collision at the back there again. As uh, you know, the drivers in the spray are getting unsighted and as the field concertinas backwards and forwards as the safety car goes around the corner, as it goes around the track, it can, uh, can cause some some issues, but the drivers so far just managing to keep their noses clean. The spray's not as big in GB4, uh, from what I'm seeing yes. here. Now, obviously running the same tyres. Yes. Potentially it's because the track's not quite as wet, but is there, do the GB4 cars just not kick up quite as much spray? It will almost certainly be the fact that we run less aerodynamics right. in the GB uh, in the GB4 cars, slightly slower cars, slightly less aerodynamics, because a lot of the actual spray itself is kind of the, uh, the bottom of the car sucking water off the road and almost turning it into a mist. So the spray off the tires, you can see, of course, is there, but they're normally, that's normally big droplets of water which fall out of the air. The mist you can see is like much finer. And when you drive through it, it's almost strange because as a driver, it doesn't hit your visor. You think, oh, I'm gonna get a oh, splash really? and it's just like fog almost. But uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, interesting to see how the rain is falling heavier in some areas of the circuit than others. And actually, Alton Park, not the biggest circuit in terms of land spread compared to places yeah. like Snetterton or Silverstone, but we're still getting some sections which are much wetter than others and drier than others. And also don't forget that last sector has the trees, so you get less rain initially, but then it dries out slower eventually, but we won't have any uh, danger of that during this race. That's why I couldn't believe that, um, you know, uh, the, the it was raining earlier at Nickerbrook. Yeah. And I was looking outside, being like, it's not, it's not raining here. And to, to the, our commentary booth to Nickerbrook on foot is a max, an absolute max of 10 minutes. Oh, it's like uh, half a mile. It's not even that far. It, it's really quite close. Anyway, safety cars in. So we are going to get what will be a couple of laps of racing. I mean, the laps we've got, you know, kind of a bit all over the place. Uh, but should be around about two minutes. That might just be the one. T should be. Well, it depends how tall, it, slowly it, Tom it, Mills it, goes it, here, which he is he going. Will, he, he's, is he gone? I thought he went. He, Sorry, no, he'll want it as slow as possible. This is going to be this is going to be the final lap he's because good. they're they're doing like one minute fifty. Best lap of the race is like a one fifty eight zero. Tom Mills is big, playing a smart game here. I don't think he knows how long there's probably left in the race. He's gone now. He's gone. He's going wide for a good exit out of the last corner, knowing that Liam McNeely cannot pass him. Liam McNeely's completely sideways out the last corner, trying to get the uh, power down, but that won't help his traction. Tom Mills an excellent safety car restart showing that experience that he has. Yeah, certainly so. Of course, the only returning driver in the GB4 Championship from 2022 will send it into Turn 1. Don't worry too much about people taking differing lines here, but Burgoyne's gone down the inside of Fairbairn. Of course, Surely not. Still... Oh, my goodness Conzo me. Again. That... Was that? That's Conzo again, and that's that's not Mills. Is surely. it Mills? No, it can't be. It, well, I mean, it couldn't be Clifford, surely. We'll keep you posted on that, but we can still see Burgoyne ahead of the one-winged uh, one, with the one front-winged car there, as of course uh, continuing on despite the damage. No, I think it, I think it was Clifford. I think it was Clifford that had this bit. We're not panicking too much, uh, as you can absolutely. Well, I say we're not panicking too much, and there we are in the commentary booth, just panicking uh, constantly. I think Mills is still. Yeah, he is. You can see him at the top of shot. Mills in is the in the lead. Sorry to panic anyone there if we get confused. It's just hard to pick up the numbers in the in the spray. Yet there is Tom Mills at the lead of the race with a good start. Liam McNeely keeping him honest, but the two elite cars are almost unsettable during this race. Irfan and uh, 
Reynolds. Ha- yeah. yeah, Harrison Reynolds. Har- Harry Reynolds is uh, they're, they're literally been known to tell for the whole race. Yeah, uh, like I say, Reynolds is doing a, a good job to keep his teammate company, but unfortunately, I think the uh, the podium might just slip out of his fingers because Irfan's in that position. McNeely and Mills at the head of that. There is Fairbairn. He still seems to have oh. some all right pace in the uh, without a front wing. And as I say that, bye bye. Yeah, Fairbairn struggling to get the car stopped there with no front wing. He'll have a lot less grip on the front tyres, especially for the braking. So he will have probably locked up there and carried on. But if we do, he'll do well to finish in seventh place, having done the whole race pretty much the whole race without a front wing. Albeit, of course, and lost it under the safety car, yeah. but that car will feel terrible to drive. Yeah, let's uh, see the old field car of Conzo down the inside of Hotchin. A lot of grass in there. That's surely not going to work. He somehow. Oh, I mean, good effort. We'll see across the line, though, Tom Mills. He was second yesterday, and he's a race victor today. Yet again in the GV4 Championship, but the first of the season for him. Mills, McNeely, and Irfan across the line for the podium. It was close, though. Reynolds was challenging. Let's see if there's going to be any other switches. Cooper Webster's given a bit of a drag race up the line, and he's a couple of laps down. I think that is actually for position uh, on Alva, and he don't think he quite got it. Obviously, Webster, he did get it, actually. Uh, Webster having issues in the earlier stage of the race. So, you know, fair enough on that one. But Tom Mills, again, I mean, for a difficult race with all you know, the safety car interventions, not a lot kept us cool. Yeah, he did. He, uh, he did exactly what he wanted to do. A couple of safety car restarts, managed them well. He was the fastest driver on circuit on that last lap. One minute, 53.4 was the fastest lap of the race. So clearly uh, confident in the rain. And uh, if it continues like this, I can't uh, see... Can't see him uh, struggling again this afternoon, but really unfortunate. A couple of uh, Cooper Webster, of course, having to pit earlier in the race. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, a good race from Tom Mills and uh, drama down the field, but glad to see that, well, actually, I'm talking about Conzo on the last lap. He was fully committed into Druids. How he didn't drop it. How he didn't drop it. But right, uh, I'm going to head over to the, uh, he, the He's the off. Area. He's out of it. I've, I've already muted him. He's gone. Uh, Tom Mills then will uh, will take that victory. Uh, and again, yeah, another victory. I mean, he's, he, he did... He had so many good flashes last year, uh, but the thing is, there, w- there was a dip of four, a big kind of mid-season dip uh, in form from Mills when his teammate Wilberski was starting to move forward in the championship. He started figuring things out later on and coming back into it. And he has this ebb and flow and coming into his second season being the only returning driver. He knows he's got the pressure and he was talking about this uh, on Saturday that he feels that pressure that's on his shoulders. He feels uh, exactly what he's having to deal with. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like a sink or swim moment. Obviously, we don't know if Tom Mills is going to be doing the full season as well. We'll keep our fingers very much crossed with the racing that he's put on this weekend. I mean, he's the championship leader at the moment, and he's really proved why he is the star he is. So KMR Sport then taking the victory with Tom Mills, McNeely in second, and Irfan in third for the Elite Motorsports team, just ahead of his teammate Reynolds. There was only 300 of a second separating them across the line. But going inside the top five, super ever for the Graham Brunton racing team. And then Fairburn, the race winner yesterday, will finish in sixth Kilcarney, Hotchin, Conzo and Clifford rounding out your top 10 those behind will be Webster after starting from the pit lane and a lap down Alva and Smith our finishers and of course Queen being uh, in that barrier going through Druids uh, did not reach the end of the race unfortunately uh, for Tech. after a good race yesterday as well that'll be a big big disappointment so there is Tom Mills into uh, into, into the podium area, or not, not quite, you know, into Park Verme. Uh, he will go. He'll be out of the car. He was happy yesterday, and he'll be even more happy. Still in pretty calm, relaxed. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I've done this before. I've I've I've, I've been here. Uh, he's had a few podiums in his GB4 career, and he is adding to it. Maybe by the end of the season. Uh, obviously part of doing two seasons he might have the most podiums most race wins of any uh, driver in gb4 at the moment that record is being held by the champion uh, nicholas taylor at nine wins i want to say because i kept joking that he wasn't going to get 10 and he didn't uh so tom mills will be off again the celebrations with the team and, and such he'll go and say uh hello to uh to, to various family members and and whatnot and uh, get ready to be spoken to by uh, by John Jackson. We'll have a quick chat with uh, with Thomas. I'm sure he's got some plenty of interesting things to say. Most experienced driver agreed. I know I've said that quite a few times, but it is uh, very interesting. Let's see what he's got to say. Yeah, Tom Mills here with his mechanic uh, just on the left, celebrating with him. Celebrating with another mechanic now. He's already uh, had a congratulations from Emily Mills, who uh, also works on the team at KMR Sport. 
and we'll just let him get his helmet off, catch his breath. Earplugs in as well. These are quite loud cars, as you can probably tell. Um, obviously, cooling the engine down uh, right there and already just getting the, uh, getting the cold air going through. Tom's getting a photo taken, keeping me waiting as usual. Doesn't break the smile. Hey, Tom. Oh, he's got to wait for his hat. Let's get Carly's get your hat. If he doesn't have his hat, he can't possibly speak. Uh, so, Tom, we, we said earlier that you were kind of licking your lips when it started raining, and uh, we can see why now. Yeah, I like the rain, I think, because <laughs> of my Formula Ford experience, I'm pretty good in the rain. So, yeah, it was a good race. Shame we didn't get more racing laps, but uh, yeah, big thanks to the marshals for braving the, braving the showers and covering the cars that were going off. But, yeah, it's a good finish. And it kind of makes up for yesterday where you were a little bit disappointed that you, you couldn't take the win. Yeah, I got off the line in the lead this time, but yeah, managing the safety car restarts. I've not done many safety car restarts actually in my time. I've not led many, so it was good to get experience of that going out the last corner. So yeah, I'm happy with my race. I couldn't, nothing more I could have done. Yeah, it was a great start after that uh, safety car and the reverse grid race coming up as well. So you should imagine you'll uh, get a few overtakes there as well. I'm hoping it stays wet. If it's dry, it'll be like Saturday where it's really hard to overtake. If it stays wet, I think anything can happen. You saw the amount of safety cars, but if we have safety cars in the reverse good race and there's not many laps to overtake, so I'm hoping it's a bit cleaner than this one. Excellent, Tom. We'll let you go and celebrate. Tom Mills there with KMR Sport. Interesting fact about Tom Mills, he designed their brand new logo, which he's very proud of. I'm just trying to avoid um, what has become a lake here in the paddock. I'm going to try and find... Here we go. Liam McNeely with Fox Motorsport. Uh, Liam, um, a, a decent race for you there and, uh, you know, second GB4 race and getting on the podium in the second place. Yeah, you know, I couldn't really have asked for, for much more, just... Uh, safety car sort of hindered our, our progress really, but we was looking strong and uh, just zero visibility really when you're stuck behind uh, a car in front, you know, it's hard to see. So uh, yeah, yeah, you know, second second race, you know, first podium, yeah, good. Uh, good for the team as well, making your debut yeah. in, the, in the championship this weekend. When you saw the rain coming down, was it a little bit worrying for you? I, I, I like the rain around here, you know, it's a, it's a proper driver's circuit this and uh, yeah, you know, rain came down and we just sort of have to all get on with it, so yeah. Excellent. We well, did very well, obviously hindered by the safety car, but it's yeah. fine. You get second place. We'll let you go to the podium now. Uh, Liam Millie with Fox Motorsport. And we have Josh Erfan we somewhere around here. I think he's gone, so let's let him get a trophy. Uh, Lewis McGlade will talk you through the podium. Certainly will. Yeah, he might, have, he might have run off immediately. So excited to be on the podium. Cheers, Jonas. As, uh, yeah, I, I, I did notice that lake. It was looking pretty grim out there. But again, sun's out. Uh, you've got, I've, I've got the sun to the left of me. I've got the darkest clouds that I've seen for a while on the right. It really is the start of the season. And uh, it did take us a while to get a wet race in GB4 and GB3 last year. And we had a couple, uh, particularly at Brands Hat, to remember those. Uh, it has not taken very long. I guess that's the price we have to pay for the absolutely beautiful day we had on Saturday for those first races of the season. They'll uh, head out onto the podium uh, and they'll be introduced one at a time. Uh, obviously, they've got to go out in order, third first and then second second and then first third. Yes, I know that sounds confusing because I've done it awkwardly. Uh, they'll all get their uh, their trophies though and like you say, well-deserved ones. Erfan did do, it, it was a nice understated drive, held off um, you know, his teammate Harry Reynolds uh, throughout the entirety of the race, but he just kept himself clean, kept himself focused and, and just didn't make a mistake at all he was uh, it, it was it was a very impressive drive uh, all things to uh, to be considered for a uh, fan um, and you know for our race winner you, you've kind of got to, to throw out your plaudits that he's done such a good job of, uh, of kind of running away at the front and and being in such a strong position <laughs> We'll all be introduced onto the podium then in just a moment. Erfan will be the first one to head his way over there. And after a super drive to that third position, just a bit of a delay to, uh, to wait for them to go onto the podium. I'm sure they're very excited to be like, no, I want my trophy now. Uh, most, mostly because I want my trophy before it rains again, because that, I think that cloud is heading in this direction as, uh, as, as we're preparing for the podium. And again, there is another race coming up this uh, this weekend. It will be the last race of the weekend, but it will be a reverse grid. There will be 13 cars of the 15 reverse. They were the 13 that remained inside the 103% rule. So uh, for some drivers, like, for example, Tom Mills, they will be starting from that 13th position. So uh, 
dropped right the way down the order. Also, you know, whilst we're here and waiting for them to go onto the podium, let's have a little bit of a shout out towards uh, Liam McNeely and that superb uh, start to the race and the pace that he was putting on in the early stages to really keep Tom Mills company. He was applying every little bit of pressure he possibly could to Tom Mills, but Mills didn't crack. Here we go then, Erfan onto the podium, third position for him as he'll take to the podium, receive him himself a, uh, oh, well, it's, 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 it's blown a bit and I think the uh, all the background has almost fallen off. So uh, Erfan receives his trophy for third place and then in second place Liam McNeely will jump up there for Fox. Again, a brilliant, uh, brilliant drive. Excellent from uh, from Gemma and Richard there, our uh, our banner holders for the GB4 Championship. As onto the top step of the podium, once again, it is Tom Mills. KMR Sport winning the second race in a row. They did win the first race yesterday with Fairburn taking the victory, but this time it is Tom Mills. He finished second yesterday and finishes first today. What a drive it was. And like you say, if we're seeing him all the way through the season, I mean, he is going to be a tough driver to beat. But more importantly, in the race later on, as the wind's really picking up, what can he do from 13th on the grid? Either way, we're going to hand down to Piers Pryor because he's chatting to some more drivers. Looking a bit... Um a little bit dirtier than you were earlier. That was a clearly a dramatic race for you. Yeah, that was probably the craziest race I've ever done in my life. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I did not care about position in that race. I was just trying to keep it on track the whole time. That was my goal. And you just about kept on second for most of the race, but unfortunately coming together with Sid Smith at turn one, which is why you are now covered in, in mud. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Sid got by me and then he just had spun in front of me and left me nowhere to go. So that took off my wing early race, my front wing, and I just had to keep it on track after that. You did well to keep it going with no front wing. It must have felt pretty, well, understeery. Yeah, I don't even know what it felt. I just wanted to keep it on track. I, I struggled with vision most of the race as well, but yeah, that was crazy. Have you done many wet races quite like that in your previous racing career? Oh, no, never. I mean, I've done the Formula Ford Festival, but that, that was this was a lot more crazy than that for sure. Well, Jeremy, I'm sure we've got more crazy races like that to come. Let's see if we can grab a word with Jack Clifford. Jack, are you ready for a quick word? Thank you, Chase, Jeremy. Uh, it's good to hear from, uh, we've got both of the KMR Sport drivers, uh, apart from, of course, our race winner, Tom Mills. Wow, what a race. Yeah. Oh, that was unbelievable. Like, I've, I've never raced in conditions that wet before ever. Like, it was, the start was good, got away well, got a couple off the line. Um, and then through some people making mistakes, inherited a few positions. I think I was up to P5 or P6. Uh, then the rain started to get a bit heavier uh, on the visor and then the track was starting to get even more pooling, uh, even on the straights. Um, and then someone went off in front of me in turn one, and I didn't see that, and I've hit a puddle, I've gone around, lost all the positions that I've made, which, which is a shame, but finished the race, cars in one piece, learnt a lot in that race. It's disappointing, but good at the same time. Well, ultimately, of course, the GB4 Championship, for many drivers, is sort of their first Slicks and Wings Championship. It's great experience, and you're here, I assume, of course, to get results, but also to learn as well. And it's experiences like this that you can't really have anywhere else. So it's probably obviously a good learning experience for you. Exactly. And I mean, the conditions are the same for everyone, um, but conditions like that, it's pretty much the conditions that you would learn the most in. Um, not only about pace, um, but also psychologically, how to keep a calm head in the wet and not be throwing it off as well. So it's as much as the result hurts a little bit, um, it's like you said, learning as well as good results. So, learnt a lot out of today, and now on to race three, where I think we're starting up the front. Hey, that'll be good fun. Look forward to that. We've uh, got Jason Conzo. Jason, you, well, I very much enjoyed watching you during that race, Jason, because I don't think there was a dull moment. I think you were up three places, then you were off, then you had a crash, then you were back on, then more, up more places than the last lap. You said, you know what, I'm going to the inside anyway. Yeah, certainly. Uh, as soon as the green flag dropped from our position, it was like, well, the only way we can go is up. So it was just judging the grip out there and trying to get a good uh, a good sense of the speed. Uh, we know where we are now. We have to dial it back for race two, but I'm super excited. The pace is there. It was a great race, though. <laughs> no lack of commitment from yourself whatsoever. So just talk to us about the conditions and how the car felt. Uh, usual rain race stuff. When we left the line, it was definitely a bit slippery. And then, unfortunately, uh, since we were under the safety car for a bit, uh, just kept getting wetter and wetter, it kept getting slippery. So I was just trying to keep heat in my tires. Uh, and it would help for a good restart. Um, 
and then I was just trying to gauge where the grip was, dive down a little bit early on the second restart, and then that's when the that's when the loop happened. Yeah. Um, but definitely excited. We're, I got a lot of info for next race since it's a reverse grid. Uh, we're super excited to see what happens. It's gonna take off. That'll be good fun. You mentioned just a moment ago there that you kind of you dived in early to the the corner that caused the spin round. Just talks about that, how the grip is on the circuit, at different places. Yeah, certainly. Um, well, Oldham Park it's definitely you gotta know veer towards more of a wet line than a dry line. Um, and then I was getting really uh, a lot of heat in my tires, so that's why I was gonna try and dive down, see if I could go inside the rain and kind of go a bit wide on the exit. And so, but I just got my right rear, uh, left rear, just on the. So that's why it caused the spin. But, you know, still a fun race. I had a great time in the car, though. It was uh, a bit of fun. Great. Well, great fun. And, of course, look, you learned a lot for race three later on. Good luck in that, starting somebody at the front for the reverse grid. Jonas, what a race. Yeah, that was uh, exciting when we actually got some racing, two safety cars. We kind of predicted that might happen with GB4 because, you know, as we say, a lot of more inexperienced drivers and uh, having some struggles. But, you know, uh, Tom Mills impressing as we, we knew he would in the wet due to his experience. Uh, nice to chat to some of the, the other guys as well. And, yeah, a few drivers out there had a few moments, didn't yeah. they? But, uh, I mean, other than Colin Queen, I mean, he was... That was bad for him, but I feel like there was quite a few. I think Jason actually uh, yeah. just spoke to them, maybe rescued it once or twice. Yeah, well, not, he wasn't the only driver to have more than one excursion, but unfortunately Colin Queen going out of the race with that mistake on the end of the first lap at Druid. He'll be dis bitterly disappointed with that. Strong result yesterday, strong result uh, up and well, strong race up until mm. the end of the first lap. Well, Cooper yeah. Webster as well, having that oh, problem yes. that meant he couldn't race. But look, we'll be back for one more race a little bit later on. There is a, a large gap between this and the next GB4 race, but the next GB3 race, the final one of the weekend, the reverse grid race, is coming up in half an hour's time at around about half past one. Everyone's getting their lunch at the moment. Will the weather hold? We'll find out very soon. Rejoin us in about half an hour's time.